Oh no, it's the R word. He's using the R word. Reuse, recycle, and repurpose. And we're gonna repurpose this cable box. I was doing some work the other day, and the uh, the guy that was mounting the TVs on the wall and stuff in the house, he says to me, hey, you want some stuff? I said, sure. So he gave me this. He said I could have it. So, it's a cable box. I don't have much use for cable boxes, but cable boxes typically have pretty good hard drives in it. So let's see what free hard drive I got out of this. What size of free hard drive I've got. So let's pull it apart. These things use security bits, which I don't have, so I gotta do this the hard way. This may take me a few minutes to get into this thing. I just use side cutters. I know there's, someone's gonna probably give me a thumbs down, tell me I should have the right tool to do it, but. I don't open enough of these things up that I really need to invest in a tool to take the part. I can usually just pull them apart with a pair of snips or a pair of pliers. They usually unscrew relatively easy. Just give me a minute to get these apart. I'm gonna find my side cutters. They're here somewhere. A pair of side cutters, you can just grip these and turn them and they will come out really easily. So. That's why I've never bothered to invest in a tool, even if it's only a couple bucks, because, I mean, these things can be spun out pretty quick. You can have this thing apart in like two minutes. Two minutes and 35 seconds later, the screws are out and the uh, unit will come apart. We've got to pop out this clip. What do we get? How big a drive did I get? I got a 500 gig hard drive. Love it. Oh, look, this even got an M card in it. A media card. M card device only. Let's take that apart. I don't know which cable operator this came from. The guy that gave it to me actually gave me a few other things too gave me a nice den in uh, receiver that says I have to fix the HDMI port on it whether that's going to be fixable or not we'll take a look at it but uh, M card media cipher hmm. made in China of course that was uh, upgradable security that they used. We'll take that apart too. Um, anyway, I just want the hard drive in this unit. That's all I'm interested in. And then we'll we'll go get the laptop and we'll format this thing and turn it into a usable drive. Anyway, the guy was telling me that uh, I was telling him I make videos. He says, oh, he says, I got all kinds of stuff you can have. So I should be able to get some uh, some cool stuff from him to uh, either tear down or, or fix. He gave me an HD DVD player as well, which I'll we'll be doing a we'll be doing a tear down, I'm sure, on that. I don't know if it works or not. I don't have any HD DVD material. I only have Blu-ray. HD DVD, of course, was the the fail format that Toshiba proposed. There we go. Hard drive's out there. Four more screws. I usually buy these down at the Value Village they're always coming up for sale for like two dollars so I've bought a, about a dozen of them over the last couple of years every time I go down like to the value village I just kind of browse through the electronics and anytime I find an old cable box I grab it 
because these hard drives work out quite well and I use them quite a bit. So this thing, the rest of this is scrap. Might keep the power supply out of this just for parts that I can steal off of it. So we'll grab the power supply and then the rest of this can go to the recycle center. I have no use for it. We'll take apart this M card and see what's inside it. It's a little PCM CIA type card. Remember back in the day when my computer had one of these card slots on it. And I had a modem, a I think it was a 1200 baud modem. Telephone modem. It was a cellular modem too, if I remember. It was a it was a US, I think it was a US robotics, and it worked with the old TAC. Um, cell, cell phone and um, back in the day I had a it was back when I was still working in the, the TV repair shop I um, I had a demo phone which I got 120 I think it was 120 minutes a month of free use and was it no it was un, it was unlimited evenings and weekends I had I had I had 120 minutes during the day and I had unlimited evening and weekends so I bought this modem that was a it was a cellular compatible modem this is back in the day when everything was dial-up right it was we we're talking bulletin boards it was before the internet this is back in the 90s actually it was probably back in the 80s I'm thinking like 88. 89 somewhere in there and uh, anyway uh, I had this modem I might even still have it kicking around here somewhere that uh, would plug into a Motorola it was it was the flip phone the little uh, I forget the mic micro tack was it little flip phone anyway the one that was real popular a little gray flip phone and it had a data port on the bottom and you could plug in a cord that plugged into one of these PCM CIA cards and it would actually dial up and you could use your uh, your cell phone as a, a, a telephone modem and it was expensive the card it was really expensive I only used it for a little while to do mobile uh, to do mobile uh, bulletin board dial-ups but uh, CRT CR, CR um, our BR2032 battery might be okay. Might be able to salvage that battery. Let's just see if this battery is in good shape. It should be because it's just used for the backup for the uh, the memory on here. These memory cards used a volatile battery backup, three volts. Yeah, that's got some charge left in it. They used a volatile uh, memory so that if you try to tamper with the uh, card at all and you lost the battery voltage the volatile memory would be dumped and then the card would no longer work so let's just unsolder this battery we'll keep that you never know when I'm going to need a battery that has solder in terminals so I'll hang on to that and we'll get rid of the rest of this junk because that's what it is. BGA chip here. If we pop it, it'll come off. That bend board should pop off. There it is. My favorite chips, BGA. When the good old ball grid array chips 
hit the market. It was that was when I decided it was probably time to get out of the the, uh, the field. Anyway, that is uh, that's that. Anyway, let's. Uh, So here's my old laptop. This thing is ancient. I don't know how old this laptop is. It's at least 10 years old, if not older. That's a, a Latitude, or I call it an Attitude 6410. I got my little drop-in hard drive dock. We'll turn on the power, and I'll look for this drive. I'm gonna go down to my, my start. And I'm going to right click on computer and I'm going to click manage. And I'm going to go down to disk management. So I've got two drives in here already. I've got the, the basic 232 gig hard drive. Actually, I guess it's a 240, but this is my my boot disk. I've also got a disk inside as well. I'll show you guys that. And here's disk two, 465 gigabytes, unknown. Uh, but we have to we have to make this. We must initialize the disk first because it's been on a, on the cable box. So we're going to initialize that disk. And now that disk is initialized. Now it's unallocated. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to right click on here and I'm just going to click new simple volume and follow the wizard it's really quite simple to do it and then I can pick assign the drive letter and I can now pick do I want to make this an NTFS or do I want to make it an, an, an EX FAT EX FAT of course is compatible with all types of systems and then just click next and then finish and we'll see the light will blink on here as it's formatting the drive and that drive is done. I want to hear people say, "Oh, yeah, you, you can't do the, you, you can't recover these these drives from from cable boxes because they're in a non-standard format. I can't make it work." Really, I've done dozens of them. I've got probably thirty of these drives that I've bought. I've never paid more than two or three dollars for a cable box, uh, and I must have thirty or more of these drives, and I've never had an issue formatting any of them. With Windows 7, your mileage may vary if you're using something other than that, but I'm using Windows 7. I've never, ever, ever had an issue with any of these drives that I have recovered out of cable boxes. It's that simple to do it, okay? And there it is. The drive is now empty. In this computer, it's what I like about this computer, you know, You'll, you'll be, this one here, when this computer dies, I'll have to give it a good funeral and I'll have a good cry because this is my favorite computer that I've got. This is my main computer. I have a desktop computer, a really high-end desktop, which has two two terabyte video storage drives. It's got a docking drive like this, a docking station, which I use drives just like this in for storing video on. It's got uh, micro and SD and, and uh, compact flash card reader, um, bunch of external drives, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, it's a, it's a uh, Core 7, i7 Core, um, running at 3.6 gigahertz. I built it over 10 years ago. It's my editing workstation. I've got uh, a 28 inch LCD and a 42 inch plasma secondary monitor for for editing and I use the desktop exclusively for editing I use this for everything else okay all my email everything is done on this laptop hence all the icons um, I use my desktop for audio recording video editing rendering conversion and that type of stuff but I don't like I don't have any email on my desktop and I don't have I don't use a web browser I use it just to upload to YouTube but I don't use it for surfing this is my main computer when I go traveling this goes with me and the reason that this goes with me is that I've got an SD card slot on the front and I've got removable hard drive I can put in 
removable little drives. So when I'm doing photography, instead of carrying around USB drives and plugging them in, I just carry some bare drives with me like this and uh, transfer all my files over to a bare drive right inside the laptop. Then I can take the drive out, drop it in one of these readers and work with it on my uh, my desktop. Say the best the best laptop I've used, and it's it's relatively fast. You know it's old. It's an i5. Um, I guess I got four gigs of RAM in it, but it it gets the job done, and the battery lasts forever. I've got a long a high capacity battery on here, and the battery will run for several hours without having to worry about charging it up. So when I'm out in the field, and I've been shooting time lapses or shooting video and my memory card's full and I need to download it, I can just do it in the car with this thing and not have to worry about batteries running out because say it'll run for, on this battery it'll run for about five hours. It's a great little laptop. I don't think they make them like this anymore. Now everything is all so thin and they got, like doesn't have a real key, this has got a real keyboard on it, right? That's another thing I like about this, it's got, it's got a real, it's got a real keyboard. And not the fastest computer in the world, it won't play, it'll play HD video fine. Um, it's a little slow at playing 4K video, but, and editing forget I'm not going to edit on this but uh, but for all my basic needs that's all I need there you go there's a hard drive formatted and uh, another free, another free drive basically so that's how you format a drive out of an old cable box thanks for watching